right, for Discover Lands Unknown, this is a fantasy flight game, and it's called a unique game, because each box is <laughs> unique. Uh, there are six total uh, train types, and the two that I got in mine are the Snowy Mountain and the Desert. Uh, the other uh, thing that makes it unique you get 12 characters in each box, and there are a thir uh, total of 36 characters uh, available. So, to play this solo, I have chosen four uh, at random, and then of those four, uh, you get to pick one that you want to play. So, the one I have chosen is Gertrude Gleason. She's a gardener. And her special ability, each character has its own ability. After you move into a space with a face down wood feature token, you may discard it to gain one food. Food's very important in this game. And uh, there's quite a lot of wood in the desert terrain. So I'm going to go with her out of the four that were randomly selected. Uh, another thing is the color that you use in this game actually plays a part uh, when there are multiple characters. Now when you're playing solo it doesn't matter, but each color, and there are four colors available, each color has three uh, combat assist cards and each of those are different for the colors. So like I said, it doesn't matter for a solo game. I've chosen green and <clears throat> the map is always laid out the same uh, for each terrain type, in this case desert, and it tells you what number tiles to place around the starting tile. So what you do is you stack up the, the numbers, in this case there's one to four. You'd stack up all the ones and put those out randomly, stack up the twos, put those out randomly, threes and fours. Now in the Snowy Mountain, there's actually there are five different uh, tiles. But then this one, that's a double-sided, it's the same on each side, it's the starter tile, and that is where you put your base camp, and that's where you start. And in this case, there is a fire printed on the starting token. That fire is very important because there are cards uh, that... Um, allow different things to happen at fires and for instance if you find some meat like this resource token here if you find some meat and you take it to a fire you can cook it to make food so to begin the game each character begins with one food and one water and that is one cooked food so you can eat it right away you don't have to cook it or find a fire or make a fire and also, uh, being uh, a solo game of these, uh, I forgot what they're called, the project cards or whatever, you take three random ones. So I'm going to take one, two, three. So these are items that I can craft. One, two, three. If I get the correct resources. So let me show a wooden shield. So if I get two wood, I can craft this to create a shield. Now I don't know what the shield does, I just know it's used for defense. So that'll be a combat, uh, effect combats. Torch. So for one wood, and if I'm at a fire, I can create a torch. Okay. And a decoy, also for defense, if I get one pelt. I can craft this. Now these are the uh, like like the blueprints, but once you craft it, you get that card number, and then it's in your inventory. So those are the cards I can craft. Uh, this is my character card, really. So down here is your stamina. It goes from zero all the way up to twelve. Now a solo game, you start with twelve. Now each night, at the end of every day, you have to camp overnight 
and you regain stamina that you spent throughout the day. And these are your three health. Right now they're all on green hearts. That means I'm fully healthy. But there are four types of damage you can take in the game. One is combat damage. Now that cannot be healed. So if you end up with uh, three damage, then you take a fourth one, you're dead, the game is over. Your character is out. Um, now, in a, in a multiplayer game, that just means your character is out, but in a solo game, that means the game is over. So you can take you know up to four damage. Uh, this type is combat. Like I said, it cannot be healed. This is sickness, and that can be healed if you find medicine. Uh, this is starvation, and that can be healed if you have food. And dehydration, that can be healed if you have water. And there is clean water and dirty water in the game. Okay, so to play the game, there are four scenarios that come in the box. Actually, a fifth scenario, but the fifth one is a kind of a multiplayer uh, kind of game. But as far as storyline, there are four scenarios, two for each of the train types. And that's what these cards are, the scenario cards. So we'll start at the beginning. Now this is gonna have spoilers, but I think each box also has slight variations in the story. I'm not sure because I only have one box. Uh, but the, uh, the story for scenario one is called Genesis. So uh, the rule book tells you that for scenario one and two in this box, I use the desert terrain. For scenarios three and four, I would use the snowy mountain. So let's read what scenario one, stage one is. Now this one has two stages to it, and uh, it'll say at the bottom of the card how to get to stage two. But let's see the story so far. July 1975. Carefully searching your new campsite, you find a letter pinned to a nearby tree, just waiting for you to find and read it. How much longer can I survive in this forsaken land? I have a plan for escape, taking my supplies and heading out tomorrow. Emmanuel Dixon. So that's the note that I found. Uh, there's someone else here, and he has a plan for escape. The letter is dated only two days ago. If you hurry, you may be able to find Dixon and escape with him. So that's the story. Now here we go. After a survivor investigates landmark number four, advance to stage two. So we're going to be looking for landmark number four. Now scattered around uh, the desert landscape, uh, there's going to be resources and yeah, of course those landscape, I mean uh, those landmarks, and uh, just a all kinds of encounters. There's going to be monsters, there's going to be resources I can gather uh, to construct things. Uh, you can also use resources during combat. We'll get into all that as it happens, but right now uh, there, there's a list of actions you can take. Each action uh, takes one stamina, and you pretty much just play until uh, you're either at zero stamina, which means you can't do anything else for the day, and then it's nighttime, or you, you can bank some stamina for the next day. Uh, so let's just get started here. I'll show you how it goes. Okay, so you can move one space uh, per stamina. Now, on this desert uh, terrain reference sheet on the back, it says if I'm moving in sand or in grass, it only takes one stamina. If I would go through a dune, it's a little tougher to get through. It takes two stamina. And there are mountains uh, here in the desert. If I would try to climb a mountain, it's going to take three. So keep those numbers in mind as you're traveling. You can see here, maybe, <laughs> these are dunes. So that would take two to get through each. This is just sand. So I'm going to go ahead and use one stamina. Go down to 11. And we're going to move here. Now when you're in the edge of a tile, you can scout a, an adjacent tile for one stamina. That's one of your other actions. So I'm going to go ahead and take one, use one more stamina. I'm going to scout 
number two over here. Let's see what we get. All right, so there is a wood icon. So I'm going to use one of these wood resource tokens and put there. Now, uh, when I get there, I'll, I'll get to flip the token over and see what's under it. A lot of times, you know, it's going to be wood or maybe even two wood. Uh, but sometimes there might be something else. You just never know what you're going to find. And then we also have this landmark, number 14. All right. And it looks like it has some, like a helicopter crash. So before I move, I'm going to go ahead and do one more stamina. And I'm going to scout to the north. Wow, just a bunch of sand, nothing. Now it does have this boot icon and it's red. That means it's a special icon. There's no, no token to put on it, but there may be something in the story or on one of the cards that says, you know, to go to the boot icon. So we don't mess with that for now. We just know it's there if we need it. All right. Um, I really like having weapons, but I don't have a blueprint to build a weapon yet. Uh, so that's what wood would come in handy for. What I could do is build a, a shield for defense, but it's gonna, I'm going to have to travel through some dunes to get there. It's a little tough. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to head to this landmark and investigate that site and see what's going on with that helicopter. So it's going to take me one, two, three, and it's all sand. It's not dunes. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and that gets me down to six stamina left for the day. And to investigate, it takes one stamina. All right. So how do you investigate a landmark? Okay, so you've got this whole stack here of cards. Uh, now these are exploration cards and they are numbered in the top corner. So this deck you leave in order, okay? So this is number 14, so you go through and find number 14 and that's what we're going to read. Now sometimes uh, there will be a card with two numbers. You just pick whichever one you want. I, that adds a little randomness, I suppose, you know, to the, uh, from game to game. But in this case, there's only one 14. So let's go ahead and read. Crashed helicopter. Yes, that's for sure. Uh, this helicopter is emblazoned with a white skull insignia. Judging by the broken rotor blades, it's never flying again. So this instructs us to roll a die on a 10 to 12 I can resolve either exploration card number 56 or 15, but on a 1 to 9, resolve exploration card 15. So let's go ahead and roll. And I got a 10. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you can trust me. Okay, so since a standard die roll would give card 15, we can do that. But because I got a 10, I'm thinking 56 is something a little special. So, let's go ahead and resolve card 56. So I return card 14 to the deck. Now I will go down to card 56. Oh, there are two of them. Now let's just go with this one here. All right, a skull code book. Okay. This book is full of cramped writing in many languages. It appears to be a series of codes and ciphers. So this is a utility card. When you would resolve a card that has the phrase white skull, you may instead resolve the card three numbers higher. All right, so this is now in our inventory. It's a skull code book. So let's move her down here. All right, so now you can only have up to 10 items in, uh, in your inventory. Right now I've got three. 
I have that food, water, and now a skull code book. All right, so we've resolved that. Now remember, this says after resolving uh, landmark number four. So that was landmark number 14. So we're still in stage one. All right, I have five stamina left. So I will have to... Hmm, I'm going to go ahead and scout. So here's a... We go down to four. I'm going to scout uh, since I'm on the edge. All kinds of resources. So now we have stone, which there are two of. Put those there. And we have this wildlife, which has the little paw. And I put that here. Okay, can I use stone? I don't even need stone for anything. Now I will show you uh, resources can also be used for combat modifiers. So if you use a wood, you re-roll the gray die. Now this doesn't mean anything yet because I haven't shown combat. Stone can re-roll the red die. Gray is basically your die in combat. Red is the enemy die. This is poison. You can apply to add one to your roll. And this is uh, salvage. And that uh, adds minus one to the red die. So there are other things other than crafting that resources can do for you. So um, I am going to, I'm still looking for this uh, landmark number four. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and move to this space here so I can scout these two tiles. But that is a dune tile. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, it's a little darker. So that's going to take two to get into. So let's go ahead and decrease this down to two. Move there. And then I'm going to spend one to scout number three up here. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Okay, so there is one wildlife resource and one wood resource. Now, also, there is water. That is great, especially for this uh, <laughs> desert one. So you're given three water tokens. And I haven't looked at all of them, but I think two of them are clean water and one may be either dirty water or poison. I'm not sure, but I'm going to pick this one here out of the three. It's random and I put it here. So now I know there is a water source. I just have to get there and see if it's good or not. So I'm going to spend my last stamina of the day, I'm down to zero, to scout number four here. Because like I said, I'm looking for uh, landmark number four. And we actually found landmark number 34. And there's also a wildlife. Now wildlife, uh, generally that will be an enemy some kind of animal that you can fight and if you win uh, there is a reward usually of meat or or and or uh, pelts and pelts can be used uh, for crafting so I am out of stamina that means it's the end of day one so then we're gonna draw one of these night cards now the game comes with four blues and six reds so what you do at the beginning of the game, you shuffle the reds and put them at the bottom of the deck. Then you shuffle the four blues and put them on top of the deck. So the first four knights are going to be these blues, which are a little easier to handle. But once you've gone through all four blues, those are set aside and not used the rest of the game. Then you use, go through the six red ones. And if your game is still going, you run out of reds, you just reshuffle those and use them again. Anyway, let's see what happens tonight. 
Hunger. Each survivor either spends one food or suffers one starvation damage. So I'm going to take my food icon, I mean food token, and get rid of it. Okay. So now I'm out of food. Light sleep. Each survivor gains only seven stamina. So a regular night is going to get you eight. And sometimes if you're at a campfire, uh, you'll be able to gain nine, just because you're warmer, safer, more comfortable. And finally, the last thing to resolve, eventful night. Each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. Okay, so that's one of our blues down. I'm not at a fire. I'm out in the middle of the dunes. So I'm going to draw from this threat card deck. And this deck is shuffled before the game, so it's all random. You don't know what's going to happen. Let's find out. Scavengers. Oh, boy. The local wildlife are most active at night. For each monster token on the map, you must choose and discard one feature token from the map. All right. Fortunately, we don't have any monsters yet on the map. This is what a monster token looks like. And they differ from the animals. Those are just enemies, you know, animals that you can find. But these are monster tokens. And usually at night they move towards you. And they're a little tougher to beat than the standard animal. Okay, so we've finished off the night card. That is the end of night one. I wake up and I've got seven stamina to use. I gotta get to that water, because uh, water is very important. So since it's grass, I'm going to spend two stamina to move two spaces. One, two. Now, if you land a movement in a space that has a resource token, you can flip it over. It's called a gather uh, action. And you get it free if it's the uh, end of your move. So in this case, I'm going to flip this over and yes it is water clean water so I don't get to take any water I just get to reveal it uh, as part of my move action so now if I want to take water I can spend one stamina per water that I take so let's go ahead and I'm going to take two so that gives me three water which should last me for a little while. This game is random. You could, I had one game where I found the landmark I needed like just a couple tiles away. I was able to resolve it and I, I beat the game in like three or four turns. Uh, then I've had it where I've explored one side where I needed to go was on the other side and I had to get water, bounce back and forth and I ended up dying just because too many monsters on the board. So. That's one reason some people don't like this game. It's so random. It's either It can be either really easy, really hard, or somewhere in the middle. But I kind of like that. So anyway, I have three stamina left for the day. I do need food. I'm out of food. So there's some, wild, uh, some wildlife right next to me. So I'm going to spend one stamina and move up here. And again... As part of my move action, I'm going to reveal this as a gather action. In this case, it says draw card 67. So the silhouette leads me to believe <laughs> I've encountered a camel. Uh, so these are the, in uh, uh, what are these called? The enemy cards. These are all enemies that you can encounter. And we're going to go to number 67. Again, these are in numeric order, uh, so it's easy to find. And yep, it's a wild camel. Uh, there is precisely zero chance you can take tame this beast to ride. All right, so <clears throat> this is the number I need to get or beat uh, on my attack roll to do one damage to it. This would be a red number if he attacked back. That would be the number he would need to get uh, match or beat to do one damage to me. 
Uh, but the camels don't fight back, so that's great. This is their health, so I'm going to have to hit them twice to get their reward, which is two meat and two pelts. Now, even though I get the meat, I would still have to cook it uh, to, to make it into food. But still, that's uh, we definitely need that. All right, so I need to roll an eight. And uh, the camel still rolls its die. I'll show you why, but it will not do any damage back. I have no weapons yet, so I need to get an eight or better. And I roll a three. Camel gets a six. Now, if I had... That, that, that's where resources come in handy. If I had some wood, I could spend one wood to re-roll my die. Or if I had some poison, I could have applied it. Uh, but that wouldn't help me anyway, because I needed an eight, and I only got a three. So there's nothing I can do to modify the dice. So I missed. The camels don't attack back. So... If I don't kill the enemy, then it flees. And that's where this comes in hand. Uh, this is, that's where this number comes in. So you look at what they rolled. They got a six. Up here, there's a compass. So you look and find the number that they rolled, which is this. So that means they flee to the southeast. So the camels are going to run back towards that little pond there. They're going to be splashing in the water. And that's where they end up. Okay, I have two stamina left, so I can chase them down, try to, but it's going to take, I only do one damage. So I'm going to have to beat them twice to get the meat. So I think instead of that, I'm just going to come down here and collect this wood. So because it's in grass, it's going to go one, two, one, two, and then I flip over the token and find that I got one wood. So that could help me uh, in a future combat or could help me build one of these items at some point. But I'm out of stamina for the day. So we draw the next blue knight card and it says, thirst. Each survivor either spends one water or suffers one dehydration damage. Fortunately, I just grabbed a bunch of water. So I will spend one water. Uh, the next thing is sleep. Each survivor gains eight stamina. That's good. I still need to find that landmark. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, we need food also. Okay, a rock slide. Pl place a rock feature token from the supply on each space with a rock icon and no feature tokens. So these basically replenish uh, tokens that you've taken. I, I haven't taken any uh, rock. They're still on. But if I had taken one and it was empty, I'd put a new token on. That's what that means. And then patrol. Move each monster token two spaces toward the nearest survivor. There are no monsters on the map yet. So if there are no monsters, spawn one monster token at the lowest numbered landmark. Okay, so we pick a random monster token. And the lowest landmark, we've got 14, we've got 34, and that's those are the only two landmarks. So it spawns at number 14. All right. Now, if, if it had been out already, it would have moved two towards me, which would have been right next to me. Ugh. All right, into the night, morning, got eight stamina. Let's get going. I'm going to come to this spot here so I can scout these two. So I'm going to go one, two, three. That knocks me down to five. And I'm going to spend one to reveal number four. All right, so we have a wood and a wildlife. Okay. Grabbing these at random. Okay, there we go. And we have landmark number 10, which looks to be some kind of... Uh, some kind of ruined city. Like a city built into a cliff. Uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Um, anyway, uh, let's 
turn the camera just a little. Okay, there we go. Now you can see. Uh, so I revealed number four and I put this wildlife and a wood. And there we have landmark number 10. I'm going to spin one more uh, to go down to three to reveal this three. Okay. So we have a wood resource, we have a stone resource, and we have a food resource. And again, there is a red icon of binoculars. Uh, it, you, it has no uh, immediate effect, but if I would find a card later that refers to that icon, I know where I would need to go. And yeah, it's way at this corner of the map. All right, so I have three stamina left. I need food, so it would be great to head this way, or I could go to this landmark and hope to find something useful. Uh, let's do that. One, two, uh, you know what? This is mostly dunes. So it's going to cost one, two, three, just to get there. And I've only got three stamina. But you know what? That would be a great place to investigate in the morning, after I've rested. And it's far enough away that if the monster moves two, it still won't reach me. So let's go ahead and do one, two, three. Drops me down to zero. And I just hope I'm not hungry on this third blue night card. Thirst. Oh, good. Each survivor either spends one water or suffers one dehydration damage. Let's go ahead and spend another water. Okay. Deep sleep. Each survivor to fire gains nine stamina. Each other survivor gains seven. Well, we're not at a fire, so we're going to go up to seven here. Okay. Uh, inspiration. The tribe leader draws one project card. So now, if there were multiple players, there is this tribe leader icon. I mean, <laughs> token. And one player uh, determined, however, random or just chosen at the beginning of the game. They're the tribe leader, and they always take their turn first. And if there are any decisions that need to be made, uh, they have the final say each, each turn. Now, at the end of every day, uh, they can either give this to somebody or keep it themselves. But if all the other players unanimously decide they want another player, then he has to give it to them. So anyway, that has, bears nothing uh, in a solo game. And what did it say? The tribe leader draws one project card. So I will draw one more of these project cards. Now I can make a backpack which is a container and it takes two hides and we don't have any hides yet so I'm gonna go ahead and place that there I have a feeling that this backpack would just allow us to carry more than 10 items alright and patrol move each monster token two spaces toward the nearest survivor if there are no monster tokens okay well we have a monster on the board and it moves two one two towards us all right, next morning, what is this, day four. Uh, I've got seven, so I'm going to spend one stamina to investigate landmark number 34. So let's grab the exploration cards and go down to 34, okay, which is this one here. It's an obelisk. All right. A tall pillar stains in the sands, covered with hieroglyphs. A small cache of supplies, marked with a white skull, rests against the plinth. Okay, now this diamond, that, uh, if you have a card that uh, looks for white diamond, or looks for a diamond, then you'd be able to do something, but I don't. But, I do have the skull code book that says when you would resolve a card that has the phrase white skull you may instead resolve 
the card three numbers higher. So this one says White Skull. Uh, okay, so here's my question. I, I don't know if it means that it would be a keyword that says White Skull. I'm just going to... Okay, you know what? Uh, as... <laughs> As tribal leader, I'm going to rule that because this says White Skull, I'm going to resolve a card three numbers higher. And we'll know right away whether that's what I was supposed to do, because it won't make sense if I wasn't supposed to. So this is 34. So instead of 34, let's go up to 37 and see if this makes sense. Okay. Your code, your code book supplies the combinations to the skull lockbox and the supply cache. Okay, so we did play it right because there was a supply cache. So in the lockbox, gain two resources of any types, then remove this card from the game and resolve exploration card 35. Okay, so we'll remove that. So 35 is what we're going to resolve next. But I get, to re I get to choose two resources of any kind. So I think I am going to do... Uh, let's do two wood because I will then be able to create this wooden shield for defense. And I'm going to take another wood in case I want, to, in case I'm able to make a torch, but I do need to be near fire to make a torch. Um, maybe I'll swing by the camp on my way back to get make a torch. Okay. Well, anyway, so I chose my two. That's what was in the supply cache. So now this is card thirty-five. Upgrade. So this is going to stay out on the table. The gem flares in your hand. Oh, I don't have a gem. This doesn't make sense. Uh, you hold it aloft. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, done that. Skull lockbox. Resolve exploration card 35. Well, let's... All right. Uh, the gym... F let's say I have a gym. Uh, you hold it aloft. Unbidden words. Spring new lips. All hail the great king. Um, you can spend a stamina if in the space landmark 34, which is where we are, and heal one damage limit once per day. So I don't know. Something went wrong there in the story, but I'm going to leave it out there. Um, I don't know if it'll really come into play anyway. So these upgrade cards, they do stay out on the board. I, maybe I shouldn't have done the White Skull. But anyway, regardless... That turn is over, and I'm going to get out of here because that monster is on my tail. So I'm going to move two because it's a dune. Spend two stamina to move here. And then I will spend one more stamina. Three. Two. Scout this one. Okay, I see a mountain there. And there's a stone resource. All right, I'm kind of in a rough spot here. I have three stamina left. So I think what I'm going to do, just to get away from him... Oh, I need food. I'm going to come down here and get this food. So that's going to take one, two, three. I'm back down to zero. And I'm going to go, go one, two, three... Then I will gather this food, which is food. Good. Sometimes it's an animal, an enemy that you have to fight. All right, so it's the end of day uh, four. Let's draw the final blue night card. Hunger. Each survivor either spends one food or suffers uh, starvation. Well, look at that. Easy come, easy go. But it did keep us from taking damage. Sleep. Each survivor gains 8 stamina. So let's go ahead and put this back up to 8. There we go. I don't know if you can hear that train off in the desert distance. Yeah. Uh, wind, okay, Windstorm. Place a wood feature token from the supply on each space with a wood 
So I have used, I did collect, gather this, so that gets replaced. Any other wood tokens missing? Nope. All right. Peril. If not at a fire, the tribe leader draws one threat card. Okay. So let's see what this threat card says. Beat the heat. The other creatures in the desert also flee the sun. Heat. Move each monster token to the landmark nearest that token. So this monster, the nearest landmark is here. So it's trying to get in the shade. If no landmarks are on the map, move the monster token three spaces towards you. All right. So that is the end of the night. We wake up. I need to get this way. Oh, let's set this camel up here. Uh, I need to get over here because I still haven't found location number four. See, that's the problem. These things can go on forever if you're unlucky, which in this case I've been. So I just need to move. One, two, I'm going to go ahead and go into this one. It's mostly sand, so that only counts as one. So let's go ahead and do three. One, two, three. I'm down to five. One, two, three. And I'll do a gather. Might as well. It's a free resource. Look at that. Two stone. Okay. Now that still just counts as one, even though it's, it is two. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six items now in inventory. All right, I'm going to go ahead and spend one more down to four, and I'll go here, and then spend one more to scout this number one tile. Okay, oh, great. It shows a food right there. And we're going to keep going that way because I need to get over here to find look, uh, landmark four. So I'm going to spin two, which will be one, two. I'm down to one stamina. One, two. And I will take my free gather. And it is food again. Great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get ready. There we go. I've only got one stamina left. I will spend it to move one space closer so I can start scouting that area. That's the end of the day. So, we're to our first red night card. Hunger, again, uh, each survivor either spends one food or suffers a starvation damage. Um, so, <laughs> again, easy come, easy go. Boy, talk about living off the land. That's been working out pretty good. All right. Uh, let's see, a light sleep. Each survivor only gains seven. Okay, let's get up to seven stamina for the morning. Night Stalkers, move each monster token two spaces toward the nearest survivor. So he's over here at this obelisk, so he's going to move one, two. He's behind the mountain. But it doesn't matter. They move spaces. It doesn't matter if what... Uh, terrain is inside each space. Eyes in the dark spawn one monster token in a space adjacent to the tribe leader. That's why the red cards are dangerous. All right, so I'm going to spawn a new monster token uh, here because I'm going that way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to spend one stamina to move here. And I will spend one more stamina to scout this number one tile. And look at that. There's another food. Boy, we're just following the food here. Put that right there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend one stamina to move here. I will spend one more stamina to scout number two. Okay, look at that. Landmark 30. But before we do that, let's put some food on the board and some wood. Okay, so there is a landmark that I can visit. Um, if you remember, I could also craft this shield for defense. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that just to show how crafting works. 
Okay, so it takes two wood. So I'm going to use these two here. Uh, and that will allow me to get from this equipment deck. Uh, that one's called, uh, I don't know the name of these things, crafted item cards. Okay. So it says if you spend two wood, you get card number 92. So let's find 92. They're multiple copies in case you have multiple players. Okay, so 92. That gives me this wooden shield. So this is what it does. During combat, you may re-roll the enemy die. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Two, four, I have, only have five items in inventory currently. Uh, now, these project cards, normally, if you've got multiple players, you can keep these secret from the other players. Um, or you can lay it out and anyone can craft a card that's laying out on the table. Uh, now, if I would have kept this hidden from the other players and I just crafted it, it would automatically go out where everybody can craft it now. Since it's just me, it really doesn't matter. I'll just go ahead and hold on to it. It doesn't matter how many project cards you have. Now, here's something I just remembered. Remember her ability. If you move into a space with a face stand wood token, you may discard it to gain one food. So we got to remember that. Uh, I haven't, luckily I haven't taken any starvation damage. Then I would have really felt bad because I could have had extra food. So we just need to remember that if she enters into uh, a space with a wood token, I just get rid of it, don't even look at it, get rid of it, and she gains a food. So that's going to really help. Let's go ahead and spend one uh, to move into uh, landmark number 30. And let's spend one to investigate. I want to see what's going on. It looks like a, an oasis or something. There's water there. So let's find number 30. Okay, there's only one. So we'll read it. A mirage. Okay. Throat as dry and sandy as the dunes around you. You stagger toward the water you see glimmering in the distance. Your mind seems to drift and blow like sand on the wind. And there's that gem symbol again, but, you know, we faked our way through it over here, but we do not have the gem, so that means nothing to us right now. Resolve exploration card number 32. So let's go find number 32. It's right here. See? It also shows it down here. Uh, wandering. No matter how hard you try, you cannot catch the mirage. Move up the three spaces. Oh, that's great. Uh, we needed that. All right. And this is spaces, so I can move through a dune for one. Uh, that would just count as one. Uh, but if I stop to gather something, that will end our movement. So I'm going to move two spaces one, two, and I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what? I don't think I get to gather for free because that is if you spend stamina to move. And since that didn't cost any stamina, that was a, a result of a card, I don't think I get the free gather. So uh, at this point, you know what though? Her ability says, after you move into a space, you may discard it to gain one food. So I am going to go one, two, because I discard that without even looking at it, and I gain one food. I'll do that. I think that's right. Again, I use my tribe leader powers to say, yes, that's how you do it. All right, so I've stopped. I've got a food. I've got one water, two, four, six. I'm at six items. And I'm still fine. So I'm going to use my final stamina of the day. Let's go ahead and explore our scout, I should say, up here. And all I see is some wildlife out in the sand. I can't tell what it is from here. Uh, but anyway, so that's the end of that day. Let's go ahead and look at the next red night card. Water shortage. Each survivor discards two water. 
That's not good at all. I've only got one, and now it's gone. Attrition. Each survivor turns one of their either starvation, dehydration, or sickness damage to combat damage. Fortunately, we haven't taken any damage this game yet. <laughs> uh, restless sleep. Each survivor only gains six stamina. Boy, that was a restless night. And drawn by scent. Move each monster token three spaces towards the nearest survivor. Not at a fire. Well, I'm not at a fire. So he moves one, two, three. And he moves one, two, three. They're coming after me. All right. We've only got six movements. Or, I mean, six stamina for this day. I've got food. I am out of water. But the water source is way over here. Those camels are enjoying the water. Let's go ahead and go one, two, three. One, two, three. So that's going to spend half our stamina. Boy. But we didn't get a good night's rest, so a little tired today. I'm going to spend one stamina to explore number four. All right. It looks like we've got uh, some wildlife and some stone. Oh, and there is landmark number four. It looks like a cave. It's right there. Uh, that's what we're looking for to advance to stage two, landmark number four. So one, two, three, I've got enough. No, I don't. <laughs> I've only got two stamina. One, two. So I can see it off in the distance, but I know I'm gonna need to camp for the night uh, before I can make it. Just too tired. Maybe if I got a better rest last night. All right, anyway, out of stamina, let's see what the next red card. Thirst. Each survivor either spends one water or suffers thirst damage. Well, guess what? I don't have any water. So for the first time, I take some damage. There we go. Okay. Light sleep. Each survivor gains seven stamina. So let's go ahead and bump this up to seven. Now, if, I, if you don't use all your stamina, you do get to keep it for the next day. So if I would have left, let's say, two stamina, I'd be up to nine right now. Uh, time passes. Each survivor rolls a die to determine an icon. So let's roll. Whoa. So I got a four. A four to six is stone. For each die roll, place a feature token of that type from the supply on each space. So are there any empty stone? Yes, there is. There's one here. Uh, and that is it. Okay. Eventful night. Each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. All right. So let's see what threat. Night wandering. You are awake. You awaken in the middle of the night to strange music. The song is far away, out of reach, and you feel drawn to it. Move four spaces toward the monster token nearest you. If there are no monster tokens, spawn one on your space. Oh. Going backwards. One, two, three, four. Wow. That set us back. Okay. I have seven stamina, so now I will spend one, two, three, four, and those are dunes, five, six. Boy, it took six just to get back, because I followed music in the middle of the night. Now I'm going to go ahead and spend my last stamina to investigate number four. We finally found this landmark. Let's see what's so special about it. Now in this case, there are two cards. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. It's a shadowy cave, okay? The darkness within the cave is a blessed relief from the heat. One of the walls is carved with hieroglyphs. Resolve exploration card number five. Let's put four back in there, and let's read number five. Mysterious gem, here we go. Uh, you stumble on something in the sand on the cave floor. You were meant to have this gem. It's a master key. 
When you would resolve a card that has a gem icon, yep, we've seen a few of those, you may instead resolve the card one number higher. All right. So we now have this gem uh, in our inventory. Okay. Now, after a survivor investigates landmark number four, advance to stage two. Stage two. Right there. Okay. The cave is damp and filled with strange white mushrooms. As you shuffle deeper into the cave, the mushrooms seem to glow and your head becomes foggy. At last, you reach a dead end and find the body of a man with a flowing white beard. You quickly search the corpse and find his ID. Emmanuel Dixon! That's the guy who left a note near my camp! This is clearly as far as Dixon got in his quest for escape, but his hand rests on something that might let you succeed where he failed. The current survivor resolve exploration card number 50, which will lead to the end of the game. All right, let's find number 50. Oh, and there are two of them, so let's go ahead and take this one. Ooh, it's a journal. Okay. The journal has a map and a simple plan Load some half-tame camels with food and water, then set out. So this is a quest item. I cannot lose this. So for one stamina, if in the space with the binoculars icon... Ooh, remember we found that earlier. So that's what I was saying. Uh, we found a card that deals with that. So if we get into that space, remove this card from the game and resolve exploration card number 51. All right. So we now have a journal with us, too. Two, four, six. We're at seven items in inventory. Now we have to get to this item. I mean, to this icon. This is one of those games. Now I've got to travel all the way over here, going past both monsters. I'm out of water, and water is up here. Oh, boy. All right. And this is the end of the day. So now I have to resolve another night card. What happens this night? Let's see, another red. Okay. Spilled water. Each survivor discards one water. Okay, well, I have no water. <laughs> no water to spill. Hunger. Each survivor spends one food or suffers one starvation damage. All right. I just spent my last food. No food, no water. Got to travel across the map. All right, sleep. Each survivor gains eight stamina. Well, that's good. At least we got a good night's sleep. Okay. And finally, <laughs> bad luck. Each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. If all survivors are at a fire, the tribe leader draws a threat card. All right, well, definitely not at a fire. So let's see what happens. See what bad luck we have. Unnatural growth. When you awaken, white mushrooms are growing in your hair. Are you infected? Okay. Your damage cannot be healed. Uh, for one stamina, I can spend one medicine to discard this card. Okay, what that means, damage cannot be healed. I'm going to set this down here just to remind me. Uh, so right now we've got one dehydration damage so if i would get up to my water source i could uh spend one water to actually heal that but now i cannot because of this uh, unnatural growth but if i would find some medicine i could heal myself of this then i could actually heal <laughs> any damage Except combat damage. Combat damage is per permanent. Well, except in this game, if we go to the obelisk because of this, Pharaoh's Blessing, I can spend one uh, stamina at the obelisk and he actually heal that combat damage. Anyway, uh, all that is neither here nor there. Uh, we've got a long trek. It's going to take a couple days at least. Uh, so my main concern right now, I've got two options for food. I can either 
go to this wildlife and fight it or we can just go around and come here or I could do both you know because we have to go through that space anyway let's do that because there are some uh, weaker enemies I'm gonna spend one stamina to move here and that gives me a free uh, gather 68 all right looks like a scorpion to me let's find card number 68 yep it's a scorpion all right uh, you could probably eat it if you avoid its stabby bits all right the good thing is it only has takes one damage to kill it uh, the bad thing is it's got a pretty good chance of hitting us and for me I've got to get an eight all right but I do have stone I've got wood and most importantly I've got this shield which if you remember during combat you may reroll the enemy die so if it hits me I could reroll that so let's see here let's just see what happens uh, we fight the scorpion it gets a four so it misses me I get a seven which does miss it but using this cheat sheet here uh, if I spend uh, one wood I can re-roll my gray now what's the reward what if I hit this thing and I kill it uh, this enemy deals sickness damage instead of combat damage okay well it didn't hit me so that's good reward would be one meat and one poison Now, poison can be used uh, in combat uh, to your advantage so I think in this case, because I do need food, I'm going to go ahead and spin the wood. Uh, we can get wood elsewhere if we need it, right? And I'm going to re-roll. Leave his four there. Because if I do not hit him... Oh, I got a seven again. Um, all right. So I missed. Uh, being a four that he rolled, let's look at the compass. That means he's going to go up... To the northeast so he's headed up that direction you know what i am not going to chase him down we'll leave that card out on the table in case i need i need it later all right well that was fun um let's go ahead and go grab this food it's going to be one two three three spots one two three stamina and it will be a free gather action, so let's go ahead and grab that. And I get food. Good. All right, so I've got five, uh, four stamina left. Oh, I'm getting close to that monster, though. So if I could go one, two, three, four, and then at least I'm two away. I'm going to do that instead of one, two, three, four. Either way, if I go around the dunes, but I need to be down here because they usually move two spaces. So I'm going to spin the last four to go one, two, three, four. And that gets me down to zero. And another red knight card. Here we go. Spoiled food. Each survivor discards one food or one meat. That is hilarious. It's devastatingly scary, but also hilarious. Thirst. Each survivor either spends one water or suffers dehydration. Well, guess what? We have more dehydration. Should have grabbed more water, I suppose, while we were up there. All right, sleep. Each survivor gains eight stamina. So let's go ahead and bump this on up to eight. We'll have a good day of travel tomorrow. Predators. Each survivor, not at a fire and not adjacent to a monster, which is me, uh, must spawn one monster adjacent to their space. Yeah, so that's the thing. The longer you go in this game, the more monsters get out on the board, and they're just traveling all over the place. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this just a bit. So you can see where we're headed here, right there. And I have eight now let's move these out of the way ok 
Okay. Uh, so we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll go ahead and stop here. I might as well grab resources. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that will gain me uh, two more stone. All right. So I'm at six, seven, eight. And that bumps me down to zero. So that was one full day. And, uh, but tomorrow we'll be able to get there and we're through, we're plenty away from that monster. So let's see what happens tonight. Malnourished. Each survivor either suffers one sickness damage or spends one food and one water. Well, I don't have anything, so I definitely am sick. Dehydrated. I'm sick now. Uh, I don't know how much longer <laughs> I can hold out. Deep sleep. Each survivor to fire gains nine stamina. Everyone else gets seven, so that'll be seven. Which is okay, because we only need three to get where we're headed. Low flames. Each fire burns out unless a survivor at that fire spins one wood. So at the beginning of the game, I mentioned our base camp has a fire. Well now... Uh, the fire is out. So even if I got to the camp, I would not have a fire to use. Move each monster token two spaces toward the nearest survivor. Okay. One, two. One, two. One, two. All right, three monsters. That is it. All right, so now I, I have seven stamina. We're going to go one, two, three. To get one, two, three to the binoculars. Now let's see what the story card says here. Uh, the current survivor resolves exploration card number 50, when, which will lead to the end of the game. Wait, no. Wrong card. <laughs> um, it was this journal, right? Quest item. Uh, I can spend one stamina if in the space with the binoculars. Then I remove this and go to card 51. So let's go ahead and spend one stamina. Now we're at three. And we're going to get card 51. Let's go down here. Let's put 50 back in the deck. Okay, there are two 51s. So let's grab this one. That's a camel. And it's an upgrade card, which means it's going to stay out on the table. All right, what do we have here? Following the instructions in the journal, you find an ancient structure occupy a half, occupied by a half-tamed camel. You'll need food and water for the journey, as well as a way to decipher the old map drawn, drawn on the walls. So I can spend one stamina if it's in the space of the icon, the binoculars, which that's where I am. Place any amount of your food and water on this card. When there is, okay, so that is the symbol. That's the little uh, character. Uh, so whenever you see that symbol, you take how many characters are in the game. Uh, how many started the game, actually. So, uh, for me, it's just one. So I need to have one food and one times two, two waters on this card to resolve exploration card number 52. So I have to get one food and two waters and get back to this space and spin one stamina. Uh, let's see, that is not in my inventory. Yeah, I guess it is in my inventory, right? It's a camel. I guess. We'll see. Uh, great. So I have to get up to the water. Uh, I've got three stamina left. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and spend one. I'm going to go up here. And you know what? Her ability, if you land in a space with wood, which is what I did, you just get rid of that and gain one food. <clears throat> All right. So we needed one food and we need two water. So we're almost there. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend the last two stamina to go one, two, and it's the end of the day. Uh, I have no more red cards. We've been through six nights already of red, which means, man, we've played for, this is the 11th day. This is a long game. Normally they don't last, mine normally don't last quite this long. Spilled water. Each survivor discards one water. That's fine, we don't have any water. Hunger. Each survivor either spends one food or suffers one starvation damage. Now we've got three damage already. If I would suffer this uh, damage, I'm dead, the game is over. So again, we just got food, but it saved our life. Okay. Sleep. Each survivor gains eight stamina. Tell you what, when I get up there, I'm going to just fill up on water. You know what? And I'll be able to heal these two dehydrations. Oh, man. i got to get up there. I'll be up there this day. Okay. Each bad luck. Each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. Okay. Kind of used to that. Here we go. Drawn to water. Oh, boy. The creatures here need water as much as you do. Move the monster token nearest a water source to that water source. This is going to be the nearest one. There's the water source. Oh, man. If there are no water sources on the map, blah, blah, blah. All right. Yeah, that was absolutely what we didn't need. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend two to get to that wood resource. So right here. And I'm going to just discard the wood. Not even look at it. And that gives me food. Because of her green thumb ability. Alright, now here's the problem. There is a monster and an enemy at the water source where we need to be. And I, I don't know which I resolve first. I would guess the monster. So let's spend one stamina. Oh boy. Oh, I take one hit, I'm dead. Because I've got three damage already. Um, but that's the only water source. And there's no way to heal. I would need medicine to heal that. All right, well. Let's go in here and see what the monster is. Okay, so uh, the, the enemies that I've found are blue, but when you turn a monster over, it's red. And this one is Monster 71. Well, I don't know what that is. Some kind of uh, uh, scavenger or something. Okay, 71 right here. We're looking at a treasure hunter. Hey, maybe I can make a deal with him. Uh, his white skull lapel pin clashes with his leather coat and fedora. <laughs> skull. At the start of combat, you may discard one treasure item to defeat this enemy and resolve. Oh, do I have a treasure item? Uh, master key. That is not a treasure. Yeah, I don't have any, uh, wait a minute, skull, no, I, it would, it would list treasure on there. All right, so I'm going to have to fight him, and he has three health. He needs a nine to hit me, I need a five to hit him. That's the good thing, at least I should be able to hit him somewhat easily. All right, let's do combat. Okay, he got a 5. No, I got a 5. And he got a 12. Okay, I'm going to use my shield to re-roll the red. The enemy die. And now he gets a 6. Alright. 5 and a 6. Uh, let's see, at the start of the combat, you may... Okay, so that does not come into play. So what happens... Uh, let's see, I've got stone. Stone allows me to re-roll the red die also. So 
So I'm going to spend one stone. Now when you spend a double like that, you do get your change back. So there's that. I am going to re-roll the red one once more. This time he gets a 12, which is also a hit. Uh, I don't know. I think I can keep spending. I'm going to invoke my tribal leader privileges and say I get to keep rolling as long as I can spend. And this one is a 9, which is what he needs. I will cash in one more stone. And he gets a 7. Okay. <laughs> Just keep going until... Uh, something happens in my favor. Okay, so I did I did hit him. So the game comes with these little uh, tokens. These can be used for various things, but in this case, it's going to show that he has taken one damage. And since he did not hit me, he flees, and his seven shows that he is going to f go to the south. Okay, so let's move him one space to the south. Now we do still have this camel, and uh, I believe the camel immediately attacks, so he will put him out here. Um, what I did was I moved his card here. Now here's the camel card, and as a reminder, Camel does not do damage back, but it takes an 8 to hit it. And he has no damage. He has 2 health. So let's go ahead and attack the camel. He got a 4, I got a 12. So that actually does a damage to the camel. But because he got a, uh, he got a 4, which means he's going to travel to the northeast, flee to the northeast. All right. Now, I'm not sure if I did that right. That may have taken a stamina for me to attack the camel. Um, I think it would have. No, no, I think if it's revealed, you have to fight. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend two stamina, one, two, to take two waters. Okay, we're gonna do this slowly so I do it correct. Um, I am going to, oh, you know what? Uh, da, 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 natural growth. Because of this, your damage cannot be healed. Spend one medicine to discard this. Shoot, I cannot heal these until I get rid of that unnatural growth. Well, in that case, I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, go all the way down to zero, which means I'm taking three more water. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have to get rid of one item. You know what? I'll just take four water. I think that'll be okay. We'll see how the night goes. If I spill it or something, I can always grab one in the morning. All right, I am gonna go ahead and end my turn with one stamina left. So let's see what happens. Thirst. Each survivor either spends one water or suffers dehydration. Oh man, I'm glad we were there, because that would have killed me. Okay. Light sleep. Each survivor gains seven. So since I've got one left, I'm gonna bump this up to eight. Okay. Time passes. Each survivor rolls a die and determine which icon. So let's roll. I got an 8. So that means uh, we are going to replace all the wood icons, which is perfect because I can use wood to get a food. Are there any other wood icons open? No. Okay. All right, so eventful night. Each survivor not at a fire draws a threat card. Okay, Man, we might be able to do this. Mushroom patch. 
The patch of mushrooms glow with soft blue light. Something makes you pluck one and eat it. Great. Roll the die. Let's just see what I get. Four. On a roll of one to 11, lose five stamina. Uh, so now I go down to three. Otherwise, on a 12, I would have resolved encounter card number nine, but Okay, so I have three stamina left. Two, four, six, eight, nine. I'm going to spend one stamina to gather one more water. Now, how far can I get away from the monster? You know what? I'll go ahead and spend... Boy, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to spend these two to come over here. It's not far enough away from that monster. He could still get me tonight. But at least I'm on my way down. Okay. If I can just get through tonight, I might be able to make it. Malnourished. Each survivor either suffers one sickness or spends one food and one water. All right. I have a food and a water because I cannot suffer a sickness or I die. All right. So... Deep sleep. Each survivor to fire gains nine, otherwise you gain seven. So we gain seven. Boy, I hope I've got enough water to last. Low flames. Each fire burns out. Okay, there are no fires. Move each monster token two spaces toward the nearest survivor. There it is. Okay, he moves two. He moves two. He moves two and attacks. So here we go. Seven. He got a seven. I got a ten. A reminder of this monster. He needed a nine to hit me. I just needed a five. So I hit him again. So he now has two damage. He's almost dead. And because he rolled a 7, he is going to travel south, which is the direction I'm headed. So that wasn't good. All right. So I now have 7 uh, stamina to get down here. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to spend 4. Puts me down to 3. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to take this wood because of her ability and turn it into a food. Okay, I'm going to spend one stamina to get to the binoculars. Now, this camel, remember this card. Spend one stamina. If the space with the Binocular icon, if in the space, place any amount of food or water on this card when there is one food and two water, resolve card 52. So I'm going to spend one because I'm on the space. And here's the camel. So I'm going to put one food, two waters, and I get to go to card 52. All right, prepared caravan. All right, here we go. The camel is carrying enough food and water for a few days. It's time to set out, but where? Discard card 51 and all resources on it. So that's the camel card, 51. So let's get rid of those things. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just put it back in the deck, since there's just one of us. I mean, <laughs> one of me playing. <laughs> all right. Survi uh, one stamina. If all survivors are in the space with the uh, binoculars icon, resolve exploration card 53. I've got one stamina left, so let's go ahead and... All right. Let's see what 53 says, because it's the end of the day. Oh, but look, there 
is a gem. And since I've got the gem, mysterious gem, it says, when you resolve a card that has the gem on it, you may instead resolve a card one number higher. So instead of 53, we're going to do 54. Ugh. Okay, mysterious path. Oh boy. Okay. You find the mysterious gem throb in your mind. Wow. Your feet move of their own accord. Soon you find a hidden grotto full of fruiting plants and water. A remote paradise. Why could you ever leave? All survivors win the game. Wow. Now that was an epic desert adventure. And just to show you how I have things organized, this is a great, uh, great thing to have. I've got one of these trays. Uh, you can get them at, uh, you know, office supply stores or whatever, maybe even Walmart or Target. But anyway, I've got them organized. You know, I've got the uh, wood tokens here. We've got wood, stone, uh, wildlife, food, these miscellaneous, and then the monsters here. So we got all the resource tokens. Then you've got these up here, uh, the water, the food, and all that. And the three smaller decks there. These are the night cards, and then the uh, um, scenario cards. I've got the project cards there. These are the completed project cards. If I would have built another fire on the map, I could have used this icon, this token. If it went out, you just flip it. Um, and then for scenario two, which is the last one for the desert, there is a specific 86 uh, enemy that you fight. That's like the boss. Anyway, so did it. I beat scenario one. It took forever, and I was down to only one health left. I was clean to life. So now I can eat some of those fruits and uh, drink some of that water that I found in the grotto. All right, I'm going to stay in the grotto, stay there forever. So thanks for watching. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll do scenario two someday.